So for basic conditions, we're going to do the exact same thing, i.e., we're going to follow the same six steps, but then we're going to do one more step to balance it in hydroxide conditions. That's a lot of head shaking. <laughs> Just one more. You got one more in you. All right, so let's try this one. Okay, so the first step again was assign oxidation states. Yeah. Iodide, I minus one, negative one. Okay, permanganate, we just did it, but we'll do it again just to get uh, a little bit of practice there. So I know that oxygen is minus two. The oxidation states have to equal what? Negative one, that's the overall charge. Each oxygen is negative two, and there are a total of four of them, correct? Mm -hmm. All right, so that's logic again. And so what does manganese have to be again? Plus seven. Plus seven, good. There we go. I wasn't reclining. I need to recline. I'm working hard up here. All right, so iodine. On the product side, I2, zero. Zero plus zero equals zero. All right, mangan, uh, well, I can't say the name of this because I'll tell you the oxidation state. Um, so MnO2. So again, we're going to assign minus two for oxygen. The oxidation, some of the oxidation has to equal what? I'll catch up. The charge, which is zero. It's zero in this case. Right? No charge. Zero. So each oxygen has a minus two. How many oxygens are there? Two. So what plus two times negative two, that's negative four. What plus negative four equals zero? Plus four. Good. All right, so now we know that manganese in manganese four oxide. That's why I couldn't name it. I would have told you. That wouldn't have been as much fun if I just told you it. All right, so what's my next step? Read out the half reactions. Okay, iodine went from minus one to a zero in iodine. So what happened there? Gained. Went from a minus one to a zero. So that means it had an extra electron. Now it doesn't. So it lost. How many? Two overall, one initially. We'll get there. So think about this. So what's a minus one charge mean? It has an extra electron. Yeah. Now it has zero charge. What's that mean? It doesn't have an... No, but what you just said is it initially had two. No, so when we balance the iodines, it will come out as two. But each iodine lost one. That's where I want to start. Then when we balance it, we'll see it's two. All right, so what happened to manganese? Went from a plus seven to a plus four. Gain three. All right, so let's write those out. Iodine loss, so that's my oxidation, right? I died. Goes to iodine plus one electron initially. And then my reduction half reaction is permanganate plus. Three, do we said? Produces MnO2. All right, so this step we haven't done yet. This step we're going to have to do now. Okay, so we're going to balance our non oxygen and hydrogen atoms. So we should always check, but just sometimes we don't have to do it. So iodine, got one iodine on the left, two iodines on the right. 
So we need to balance it, right? So I'm going to put a 2 right there. Now that we've balanced the iodines, and each iodine lost one electron, how many electrons did they lose in total? Two. two. That's where the two comes from. That's where I started to say that. Actually. So manganese, well, it's already balanced, so don't have to worry about that. Just that iodine. Now, I will tell you, this is an um, easy step to miss. And I don't have any other tricks or, tri you know, tricks or secrets for you other than just being self-aware that this is an easy one to mix because it doesn't always happen. You don't always have to balance something in the half reactions. Um, and one thing that I, I guess the only trick I can tell you is who does this, okay? So for this, watch out for our diatomic elements. Because the diatomic elements, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, there always are, you know, two, hence, you know, diatomic elements. But when they form ions, they always form monoatomic ions. I minus, Co minus, F minus, N3 minus, O2 minus, H plus. And so that's a very common, at least I think the most common, uh, scenario where that happens. Where you've got a diatomic element gaining or losing electrons and forming the monoatomic ion. You saw in both uh, half reactions for uh, the electrolysis of water that we did in the laboratory. Remember that? Remember how much fun that was? Mm -hmm. All right, everyone high fived afterwards? Because mm -hmm. it was so short. That's why, like, yeah, we're out of here. Um, no, but of course, hydrogen, uh, the two hydrogens in each, uh, in the, you know, hydrogen water, uh, each hydrogen was. Uh, Gaining one, and there's two hydrogens in water, so we had to multiply by two. And then each oxygen in water going to O2 was gaining, no, nope, losing two. I'll get it right one of these days. Um, and so, of course, the O2, when we bounce that, it went up to four electrons. All right. Okay, after we did that, what's our next step? Balance the electrons. Okay, how am I going to do that? Six, we're going to go to six. We're going to multiply this one, the iodine, the oxidation by what? Three. Multiply by three. We're going to multiply the reduction half reaction by two. All right, so it's going to be six iodides. Plus two permanganates. Produces three iodines. Plus two MnO2s. All right, so again, we're going to keep going to do the same steps that we did previously for acidic conditions, but then we're going to do one more step because it's basic conditions. So what's my next step? Balance the O's with H2O. Well, that kind of rhymes. Balance the O's with H2O. Oh, oh, wait, I almost sang. Sorry. <laughs> Keep my word. All right, so how many oxygens do I have on the left side? Eight. How many do I have on the right side? Four, so how am I going to rectify that? Those don't equal. I add four waters to what side? To the right, to the product side, good. So now I have eight oxygens on both sides. Balanced. Well, oxygen is balanced. Okay. <laughs> now what do I got to do? Hydrogens. Hydrogens with H plus. All right, so how many hydrogens do I have on the left side? Zero. I'll catch up. I'm a little slower than you guys. All right. How many do I have on the right side? Eight. So how am I going to rectify that? 
Eight on the left side. See, I told you I would get there. All right, so that's how you balance it under acidic conditions. So if this said 18.3, balancing redox reactions occurring in acidic conditions, we'd be done. Actually, it would also say balance the equation occurring in basic solution. He basically says the title and the question the same thing. Like, yeah. come on, get a little creative. It's, like, it's chapter 18. He's like, I'm done typing. I'm finally done with this book. Okay, so that would be acidic conditions. Okay, with basic conditions, again, we're going to do one more step. So let's write that for basic conditions. What is it? Step seven. Okay, we're going to add OH to both sides to neutralize the H plus signs. Okay, so in acidic conditions, we can have excess H plus. Basic conditions, we can't, so we're gonna have excess hydroxide. So this is just a trick to balancing this. Okay, you could balance it starting off with hydroxide ions. I don't think that's as easy as this way. Okay. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to okay. I see that I have eight H plus ions. I'm going to add eight hydroxides to get rid of them. But it's kind of like algebra. Whatever I do to one side, I can do whatever I want. But whatever I do to one side, I got to do it to both sides. So I'm going to add eight hydroxides over here as well. Now, what happens to the H plus ions when I neutralize them with H OH plus? It's going to make water. Yeah, so those are going to cancel each other out because H plus plus hydroxide makes water. And that's some sloppy H's. So these combine to make eight waters. Now what's the matter? Over there. Over here? Mm -hmm. I got four waters on one side, I got eight. So I've got waters on both sides. What happens to some of them at least? Cancel. They cancel out. So four waters on the right side will cancel out four of those waters. And so now, my equation is balanced. And it looks like a mess. But we can rectify. Let's clear this up. Let's, let's do this. I have a little bit more room. So now my final balanced chemical equation is four waters plus six iodides plus two permanganates produces three iodides, iodine, sorry, plus two MnO2s plus eight hydroxides. So just one more step. It's yeah. <laughs> one little teeny tiny multi-step step. It should be like 7A, 7B, 7C, 7D. Then you do this, then you do this. But it's just one more step. All right, so that was, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, at least it's going to take a little bit of getting used to. You know, the more problems you do, the easier it will come. So let's go backwards. Let's go back in time. Do you remember when we uh, balanced iron plus two plus permanganate plus iron? It produces iron plus three plus manganese. Do you remember that? All right. So oh, it's a good time. All right. So now let's pretend this was under basic conditions. So we already did it in acidic conditions. Let's. Uh, when you cross things out, you gotta be in red. 
So let's uh, do it in basic conditions. Now, we would have already had to do this. We didn't, have, we didn't do any extra work. We did it one through six. And now we're just going to add in our seventh step is add the hydroxides. Okay? To neutralize, get rid of the H pluses, right? So, how many hydroxides do I need to add? Eight. If I add them, I got to do it on both. So, eight hydroxides. Again, I can do whatever I want as long as I do it to both sides. What happens to the eight H pluses on the left? They're, get, we're, they're gone. That's why we added the hydroxides. And that would make eight waters. Yep. And then some of the waters, four of these waters, well, all four of those, will cancel out four of those waters. OK, so by chance, it was the exact same numbers, but that's the same process we would do. They won't always be four and eight. I don't, that was just sheer coincidence. But that's what you do. For that basic conditions, the next step, add as many hydroxides as you need to, both sides, to get rid of the H plus ions. Then those are going to make some waters. Cancel out those ones. And then you got to see, now, and that don't even always happen. There might not be waters on both sides. Eh, there might be. Uh, but it doesn't always have to be. But you do have to check to see if any of those waters uh, cancel out.